back for round two of the first uh, episode of OpenMRS University. Um, we are, I decided to break that in half so people with slower internet connections can watch the pieces one at a time. All right, so we have installed a bunch of Eclipse plugins, and I'm now starting Eclipse again to check out the code and build it and run it. Um, one thing I've changed here, you may have noticed, um, this uh, directory used to be like backslash backslash PSF. Uh, basically, it was a network directory mapped by parallels, which I'm using to run the virtual machine. Anyway, that uh, Eclipse or Java or Maven or Windows XP didn't like that. So anyway, here we're going with a simpler URL or a simpler file name for where I keep the workspace. So if you're running a VM, 95% of you won't be, 99% even, then you might want to be careful with that. So, all right, so I've opened up Eclipse again, and now I'm going to check out the code. So I'm going to hit here Control N and type in SCM. Um, I could also get to this through File, New, Project, but um, this is the way my fingers have learned to type the keys. So what I want to do is check out a Maven project from SCM. So I choose SVN as the protocol, Subversion, and if you don't see anything in this drop-down, that means that you haven't configured all the plugins correctly. So now I put in the um, URL where our source code is. And you can get this URL from the instructions, obviously. Once you've done it enough times, you'll remember it. Um, so I put in trunk. Basically, I'm checking out the head revision of trunk. If you were developing a module, you might get a specific tag uh, that corresponds to the version of OpenMRS, the minimum version of OpenMRS you want your module to run against. But um, as I said before, we're working as a core developer. So we're just checking out the latest revision of the core of the project. So. Um, uh, some stuff is getting checked out, so I'm going to pause the recording and resume it once uh, I get the first confirmation. Alright, so I get a dialogue asking me basically which projects I want to check out, and I want to check out all of them. Uh, you'll see there's one root project and five sub-projects. Um, this is an uh, interesting and um, warning message which is new with the latest version of this Maven plugin. Um, I'm going to ignore it. I don't think it actually causes any problems. But apparently, uh, well, apparently Maven, uh, th this Maven plugin really wants to have built-in Eclipse plugins that support uh, the different uh, Maven goals that go on, such as code formatting but shouldn't be necessary. So we've checked out the code, the, uh, and Eclipse is now building the workspace. So um, hopefully that goes well. It's possible that we're going to see a couple of red X's uh, over here on the projects due to those warnings that we just saw, but uh, that won't be a problem if we do. So, um, as I mentioned, you know, we see these five, we actually see six projects here. Really, the five below um, are children of this one parent project. So, I'm really not a fan of the way Eclipse and its Maven tooling display this, uh, but it's sort of what we're stuck with. Um, and I guess it's actually one of the reasons why I don't strongly recommend Eclipse anymore like I used to. So, all right, so the code is checked out um, and the, the workspace has been built and we actually do see a couple of red X's um, just to show you where that's coming from. It's coming from here, this pom.xml. And if I open that up, I'm gonna see an error message that has to do with the uh, code formatter. Um, and I'm not really sure what is causing this, but uh, it's not actually a problem. So, all right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run, so I'm gonna right click here on this root project 
and I'm going to say run as maven install. So uh, the terminology there, install, means that maven is going to go through all of its uh, build cycles. Basically it's going to build this code, package it, and then install it in our local repository, meaning the uh, the basically what lives in my home directory dot m2 slash repository. Um, that's not really so important to know, but basically the first time you check out this code you need to do a maven install. Um, after you've done maven install once, you can do a maven package. But, or you can keep doing Maven install, it doesn't hurt anything. So, um, one thing, first off, I'm running this Maven install on this root project here, which actually means that it's going to look at the child projects, decide what order they should be built in, and then it's going to execute that install command on all five of them in the correct order. So, um, that's what's going on. In addition, running a Maven build runs through the unit tests in addition to just building and packaging the code. So on the on the one hand that means things take longer. On the other hand it means that once you've run your code or once you've built your code it's also tested and you know you can't get away with having introduced a little bug and forgotten to run the unit tests and broken something. So there is a way to disable or to skip the tests. I'm not going to show you what it is because you shouldn't do that. So while the tests run, I am going to pause the screencast and I'll record or resume recording once something else interesting happens. So um, after let's say five minutes and thirty-one seconds, and that would have taken considerably less time if I weren't running in a VM with limited RAM. Um, all of the projects have built successfully. Um, so, great. So the next step we're going to take is to actually run the application. You know, so what we've done so far is build and install it in our local Maven repository. So the next step is um, is to run the application, and we're going to do that using Jetty, which is an embedded web server um, that's also easily packaged via Maven. Um, in production, you probably end up using Tomcat or JBoss or Glassfish or something, but uh, for development, basically, we use Jetty because it's trivially easy to get up and running. So I'm going to right-click here on OpenMRS Web App, not the root project, but the Web App sub-project. I'm going to say Run As and Maven Build, uh, the one with the dot, dot, dot after it. The reason is that I need to give it a specific uh, Maven goal rather than one of the handful that are sort of available right there when I right click. So the goal is jetty colon run. Um, and the base directory here should be web app. And um, depending on Eclipse, it may phrase this as something with some curly braces around it and a web app uh, and a workspace underscore LOC workspace location or something but the point is you want the you want either your OpenMRS web app project or the web app folder wherever it may be and the goal I said is jetty run so I'm going to uh, give this a name so this will be run or jetty run OpenMRS trunk and save that and run So this should get started running pretty quickly because um, what OpenMRS has noticed at this point is that, well, basically this is the first time I've run OpenMRS uh, on this machine, and well, and so it's going to actually take me through the first time setup, and it gets to do that pretty quickly. So I'm now going to go to. Um, HTTP localhost 8080, OpenMRS. And indeed, I see this uh, initial setup or installation wizard. So I'll, I can go ahead with the um, simple installation, uh, but 
I'm going to actually go through advanced just to show some of the options and describe them. So I'll choose advanced here, continue. So um, the database connection I really want to leave as is, uh, unless you're doing something really unusual. Uh, the database driver as well, if you're using MySQL or any of a handful of supported databases, um, you just can, you, know, you don't need to specify anything here. Um, you would only need to put something here if you're using an, a database that we don't ship the driver for in, in the regular packaging of the web application. So I leave that blank as well. So it asks, do I currently have an OpenMRS database installed that I would like to connect to? And the answer to that is no. I will let it create one. I'll let it call it OpenMRS. And this is where I need to know the root password for MySQL. Um, which basically gives the installer privileges to create that database. So um, hopefully I remember that correctly. Um, so I continue. Um, these options I want to leave as they are. Um, yes, I want OpenMRS to automatically create the tables. You would basically never change that. Do I want demo data? Actually, in this case, I'm going to say yes. Uh, because I want to have some concepts and a couple of patients to play around with rather than having to create all that from scratch. So next question, do I have a database user other than root who has read write access to this database? Um, and since it created the database itself, I'm going to say no, I want it to create a user for me as well. And I put in this same root password again. Hit continue. Um, do I want to be able to upload modules from the web interface? Yes. Uh, if you're really trying to lock down a production instance so that even a, people with admin access to the web application can't add modules, you would turn this off, but that's uh, not the usual setup. And do I want database updates automatically applied? I'm going to say no. Um, if you were really trying to basically set up a machine that someone could run uh, and basically that would perform updates in non-interactive mode. So if you're setting something up and you expect it to be upgraded while you are not nearby and you know, while there's no real administrator capable of um, managing that, you might choose yes for that option. Anyway, I'm going to leave these as they are, yes and no. So I continue. And now I need to give a uh, new username, sorry, a new password for the admin user. Um, so, and it needs to be at least a certain length and have not just letters. So let's try uh, something that I hope is good enough. All right, um, this next question is basically about if you are going to be, um, if you're going to be publishing concepts that you create to uh, and ex externally, and you want to basically register your register this installation as an official OpenMRS installation with a unique name, you would fill these details out. Um, I'm not going to do that on a development machine, so I'm just going to hit continue here. All right, so got a set of options I've chosen and I'm gonna hit finish and let's see alright so I got my MySQL root password right because it was able to create a database and a user um, and now uh, we're just running through all of these install or running through all of these um, installation of core data installation of the demo data and then running um, all the updates to bring the data model up to the latest version. Um, you know, in this case, it's 1.9 development. So a pre-alpha version of 1.9, but um, I'm sure when you get to be doing this, uh, it'll be on a different version. So I'm going to pause the recording again here and resume once the next exciting thing happens. So after several minutes of running through those scripts, um, I'm now redirected back to the OpenMRS login screen. So I type in you know, admin username and the password that I chose.
and voila, I've got an OpenMRS installation. If I look back here over in Eclipse, you'll see um, the log over here in the console. Um, nothing exciting has happened since I basically just let the thing sit for a while and then logged in. So um, I'm going to now show sort of just making one totally trivial change to the application uh, just to show, um, well show that in action. So here we go, look, nice clean welcome screen. So I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to open up, hit uh, control shift R and I'm going to find index.jsp and I'm going to choose this one here, the root one in web app. Um, whoops, sorry. Uh, it looks like this actually redirects to another file, so this is not what I wanted to open up. Um, let's go with, uh, actually, let's go with welcome.jsp, which is one of the portlets that's included on that page. So I'm going to open this file up, and I'm going to, uh, at the beginning here, I'm just going to put a big, like, heading. Um, font color equals red and I'm going to say this is development. Bit of a strong statement for what this really is but I just want to show that I make a change here to one of the JSP pages, JSP files and I refresh and voila we see the change that I made uh, visible here. So um, I've got the code checked out. I've got it built. I've got it running, and I, you know, I'm able to make modifications to the code and see them reflected here. Um, this was a change to just a JSP page, so that um, was pretty minor. Um, if you change a Java class, you actually need to rebuild things before you can actually restart or before you can see them reflected. Um, so it's not quite as easy as a single gets you all the changes you need. So, all right, that was the first episode of OpenMRS University in two parts. Um, we installed Eclipse plugins, and we checked out the code, and we got it running. So um, I will catch the rest of you at, in a later screencast. Hope you enjoyed this one.